It is 921. Some recent research found that patients who have the most common type of breast cancer, that is estrogen receptor positive, uh, lymph node negative, can safely avoid chemotherapy treatment. This, of course, has major implications for treatment plans going forward, and I want to know more about it. So I'm happy to have with me right now Dr. Daniel Morgenstern. He's a leading breast cancer subspecialist with Starling Physicians. Uh, he's joining us today to tell you how this may affect you or a, a woman that you love. Uh, first and foremost, doctor, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Here. Yes, and welcome to Connecticut. You're coming from Boston, uh, from Dana-Farber, yes? That's correct. Um, for the last 14 years or so, I've been at Dana-Farber working both clinically, caring for patients with breast cancer, and also researching new treatments and even preventive strategies for women at risk for the disease. Okay. How big of the news is this that uh, a lot of, some women don't need chemotherapy? Right. This is really practice changing. This is like, uh, you know, oftentimes research in breast cancer is baby steps, little refinements. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say probably a small leap. Okay. In terms of uh, how, we're, how we're approaching things. Now, to whom does this apply? So this research finding, which was presented in Chicago at the American Society of Clinical Oncology and published in the New England Journal of Medicine, mm -hmm. um, uh, it applies to women with early stage estrogen receptor positive breast cancer that is also lymph node negative, not spread to the underarm area. To the lymph nodes, yeah. The lymph nodes, yeah. correct. So uh, this study was conducted, one of the largest studies conducted in uh, the history of oncology, breast oncology, in 10,000 women. Mm -hmm. And uh, after surgery, women had their tumors removed and subjected to a genetic analysis called the recurrence score. That recurrence score generates a number, and that number can be low, high, or intermediate. Now, we've known for quite some time that if the number is low, that these patients do just fine and have excellent longevity with uh, maybe radiation and certainly some anti-estrogen hormone blocking therapy alone, okay. which is manageable. Yeah. Um, however, in patients with higher scores than that, and historically, really most patients with estrogen receptor positive breast cancer, we knew that about 15% of patients will recur if they don't have chemotherapy. So traditionally, we had treated everyone with chemotherapy merely to prevent yeah. a few of these recurrences, kind of a primitive approach, yes. uh, one size fits all. Yeah, yeah, but in, it's interesting you mentioned that because we're seeing in more and more different scientific disciplines this idea of personalization. What is driving that on the breast cancer side? Is it because you just have more options or are you finding out that the breast cancer tumors themselves are more individualized? Well, uh, you're, the latter point, which is we realize that breast cancer is probably a family of diseases, and probably now we know about five subtypes, which this estrogen receptor positive is one. And so now we're really tailoring our treatments to the specific type of breast cancer that's involved uh, with no more or no less than is necessary. Mm -hmm. So this study, uh, again, about 6,000 to 7,000 brave women uh, got an intermediate recurrence score, this gray zone where we're not certain about whether chemotherapy is uh, uh, beneficial and courageously they agreed to randomly be assigned to either chemotherapy followed by the hormone therapy or hormone therapy alone yeah uh, not by their doctor's recommendation but by the flip of a coin right they're double blinded essentially right. they don't right. know what they're getting correct right. yeah. and uh, thanks to these women and the investigators we've learned that in this group of patients uh, with long-term follow-up of nine years patients who just had the endocrine therapy the hormone blocking therapy alone did every bit as well, with few exceptions, uh, yes. to the patients who receive chemotherapy prior to their hormone blocking therapy. And that, that really applies, again, to about 50% of the 250,000 cases of breast cancer that are diagnosed each mm -hmm. year, and about two-thirds of them will have this intermediate score where we now have some certainty about what to do uh, and able to scale back on some of the treatments. Yes, and uh, I know we, we don't have a lot of time. I'm, I'm guessing it goes without saying that this is also addition by subtraction. It's not just the outcomes are better. Just not having to go through chemotherapy means losing a whole round of side effects that uh, are just very debilitating. Right, and those are both acute and chronic. So think about uh, a single mom trying to get through chemotherapy, holding down the job, holding down the health insurance, oh, all yeah. that. And then there are long-term side effects that sometimes uh, uh, nerve damage or heart damage or other things 
which may persist for many, many years. So it really is an advance in tailoring our therapy. Yep. As you said, to do just what's required, not any more than that, especially when you're dealing with something that's literally as toxic as chemotherapy can be. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. It's a been pleasure a pleasure. Have, yes, I'd like to talk to you more about uh, ways maybe we could start doing preventative measures for breast cancer because the incidence is, uh, the incidence rates are so high here in Connecticut. So uh, we'll try to get you back sometimes. Looking forward to it. My pleasure. All right.